I got one hour of sleep. Okay, the weather outside is insane. I just got to the airport. I'm baffled that my flight is not canceled because the roads are crazy. Let me just show you this board right now. Somehow my flight is not canceled and I don't know how. Like it's crazy. Except for an hour, I'm so tired. The weather is oh so cold. I just wanna sleep. I just wanna I just wanna I just wanna sleep. So this is what I'm scared is gonna happen. I'm scared that when I'm in this airport my flight's gonna get canceled. If it got canceled and I was still in my hotel, bad but not that bad. But I'm scared I'm gonna get stranded at this airport, which I'm not gonna look forward to. Fingers crossed with that situation. I also need to tell you more about yesterday. Woke up. I'm so tired, so like I hasn't hit me, hit me, but like Jimmy Fallon, dude. I watched my vlog because I stayed up and edited it and I didn't even tell you all the wonderful things about him. I'll tell you right now. I'm just gonna stop right over here. Okay, let me tell you reasons I love Jimmy Fallon, okay? He has great energy. As soon as I got to the place, you know, I went to my change room, I started getting my makeup touches, whatever. Before the show, he came to my change room to meet me, before the show actually started. And we chatted for like five minutes. He was like referencing very specific jokes from my videos. Like he's watched my videos. He was in love with my parent characters. He was telling me, he's like, oh, I love when your dad said this and this, this video. And I was like, oh, wow. Like he's really familiar with my work and actually watches my videos. It was very pleasant. He just made me feel so comfortable the whole time. Whether it was before the interview, during the interview, after he was so like, it's, you're going to be so great. This is going to be so much fun. And he was just, just was so warm and welcoming and every, any bit of nervousness I felt, he totally alleviated. He was so, so cool. I was so impressed by him and his energy and just such a pleasant person. Definitely one of those people you meet and they change you. And they change the way you think about treating other people because he just treated me so well. So like, dude, tweet Jimmy Fallon and tell him I said he's freaking amazing and he's so, so wonderful. But yeah, I need to go to my gate now. Hectic, bro. It's hectic outside. Hectic! So I'm off the plane. I'm not in Salt Lake City. I'm in New York City. We've been on the plane for two hours. I was sitting on the plane for two hours, waiting for the runways to clear or the plane to defrost or something. And then I guess there's a timeout of how long you can be on the runway. So we went back to the gate, turned around, waited there. They decided to deplane us, couldn't get off the plane because the door was frozen and also we were snowed in. So on the plane for two and a half hours, still in New York City, flight is officially canceled. The weather is crazy. There's no flights leaving today. Um, which means I'm gonna miss a lot of things in Salt Lake City today that I had to do, but the main thing I have to go through is go for is my panel tomorrow evening. So I have a flight on hold tonight at 9 p.m., which I feel like is gonna be canceled. Like, let me, sh I need to show you the situation right now, hold on. It just looks way worse in person. I don't know if the camera's picking up on how bad it is. Like the window over there, it's just all completely white. Like I can't even see out, it's just white. Um, so I have a flight on hold tonight, and then a flight on hold, and then a flight on hold tomorrow morning as well. So I'm heading back to the same hotel and God knows the traffic is gonna be insane. So not ideal, but we're gonna remain positive. Ah. You know the ending of Titanic where people are trying to find their loved ones? That's what finding my baggage is like right now. There's just seas of people and baggage and I don't know where my suitcase is. I'm just like, bros, bros. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're waiting for LAX in about 10 minutes, they should start showing you from Carousel 11. LAX. Okay, I never thought I'd be in this predicament in this day and age. I'm in this rundown, rundown hotel. And you know I don't care, I'm like mad low maintenance. This is fine, bed, whatever occurs. This is the view. Like, it's crazy. The taxi almost got in like five accidents driving here, got stuck on the road. It is crazy outside. This effing guy at the front desk, so this is clearly like a, I don't know if it's privately owned or whatever, but this mother effer, I'm sorry. People who can't help other people, like, it's a disaster outside. People are like struggling. Every single flight in the airport got canceled. So people are struggling to find places to go. And like, you need to help people in these situations. So we're struggling to get into the hotel. There's so many people waiting in this hotel. And I saw him giving so many people a hard time. And I go up to him and you know, check-ins at three and I'm much earlier than that. And I have much experience at hotel. So I know how this works. If the room is ready, they give it to you. If not, you have to wait till it's done. That's just what it is. He's like, yeah, the room's ready, but there's an early check-in fee. And I'm like, in my entire existence, I've never ever been charged an early check-in fee in the fanciest hotels to the crappiest hotels, never. And I'm like, 
I heard him say to the guy before as well, there's an early check-in fee, and he's like, it's $50 cash. And the guy didn't have it, and he's like, fine, fine, give me 40. Like, I heard him negotiating with the guy, and I'm like, you're just making this up. So he says it to me. He's like, there's an early check-in fee. And he's like, cash. I'm like, why does that have to be cash? You know if anyone ever asked you for cash, something is sketchy. I'm like, why does that have to be cash? He's like, that's a policy. I'm like, do you have the policy written down somewhere? And he's like, what? And he like couldn't show me a policy. I'm like, show me where it says like the policy is written down that I pay you cash. And he's just like, I'm like, I want to pay in credit card. First of all, there shouldn't be a fee. I know he's making the fee up, but I'm like, no, I want to pay it in credit card because then wait, that it's e less easy to scam that ish. He said, oh, but there's gonna be taxes and stuff. I'm like, that's fine, I'll, I will pay the taxes. So I paid more just to pay my credit card, just so this mother effer couldn't pocket the money. I'm like, you're a horrible person. People are struggling to find places to stay. The roads are horrible. People are freezing, and you're trying to like make a buck off people. It's like, not okay. It's mother effer. Anyways, the situation I'm in right now is I'm in such a small hotel that doesn't have room service. No one is gonna deliver because the roads are like shut down, and there's nowhere close to eat. So I'm actually in a situation where I can't eat. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm gonna get food. I'm starving, and I don't... The only way I could possibly get food is if I go out there and attempt to walk. And, and I grew up in Toronto. I'm used to the snow, so if I say it's bad, it's bad. Um, but there's literally nowhere close at the... The streets are impossible to walk on and drive on, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna starve. I don't know. I don't know. What a turn of events! <laughs> on the positive side, this room is very warm. Nap time for two hours. I'm gonna do nap time and then I'm gonna go look for food because I really have to sleep for one hour and I don't think I have the endurance right now or the stamina to go through the snow to get food. So, nap time. Nap time. Nap time. Nap time. Nap time. Nap time. Okay, it's four hours later, and I need food. I need food desperately. As of right now, my flight that was on hold for tonight is canceled. The flight for tomorrow morning is canceled. Right now, it's looking like I'm gonna miss Sundance, which is a huge, huge bummer, because I was looking forward to it so much. But I need food, so I'm going to go venture outside, I guess. Okay, so we're walking. It's cold, but we're gonna find some food and then buy a lot of it. That's what's up. God damn. I've never experienced anything like this. Everything is closed. Taco Bell is closed. All the stores are closed. It's like the whole city is shut down. There's no food anywhere. And there's no cars. It's like, it's like death. It's like legit death. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh my God, I'm so cold. Holy crap. Oh my God, that was hectic. I've never experienced anything like that. There's snow just everywhere in my shoes and just, Taco Bell was closed, pizza was closed, restaurants closed, grocery, everything. I found one convenience store open and I got water, Coke, popcorn, a croissant, and I got these um, things. And the lobby has hot water, so I'm gonna try making this right now. Um, it looks like I'm stuck here for tonight and tomorrow. As of right now, the only flight is like Monday or possibly tomorrow late night. So I don't know, hopefully I can get some more food. I know they have a vending machine here too, so I might just have to survive off like chocolate bars and chips. But like, my nail also ripped off, so. Things are going great. I will say something I love about crappy cheap hotels is they always have a microwave and always have a fridge. Fancy hotels don't have that ish, so the, hot, the water wasn't hot enough to um, make the soup. So I'm monitoring in the microwave. I'm sure this is like not allowed and not a thing because it's in styrofoam, but like I'm desperate. Yeah. Damn, the soup is spicy. I'm still hungry. Uh, I have another soup and I have popcorn. I should have just bought like 10 of these things. I'm such an idiot. I bought a lot, but like, I'm a cow. So, ah, spice! I've got to tell you one story about yesterday. When Jamie came to my room before we started shooting, like I told you, to meet. Then we talked on the show. And then he was just so kind. Like, when St. Lucia was performing, I was leaving the stage. And I'm like, thank you so much. He's like, oh, no, why don't you just stay? Just stay and watch it with me. And I was like, okay. And then during the break, he actually was like, do you want to go talk to the audience? So he took me, like a mentor, like to the audience. And we spoke to the audience for like five, ten minutes. And they asked all these questions. And he was so sweet because obviously everyone's asking questions for him. It's his show. They love him. But every question he would redirect to me. So someone's like, what's your favorite movie? And he was like, oh, I don't know, Lily, what's your favorite movie? And he like included me so much. We like spent a lot of time together and he's so dope. And we were even talking about like the possibility of like maybe doing a sketch together or something. He's just so wonderful. I just wanted to share that because I forgot to tell you that. I'll, I, I just remember the way he made me feel when I was standing there and he kept including me. And I felt so like welcomed and so comfortable. And he's just a really, really great guy. Really, really great guy. All right, updates. The time is 6.49 p.m. Um, I got all my emails done. I'm trying to get some work done, but I really need a rock star. But I ain't trying to go outside. I didn't try to find one. So I'm going to see what's in the vending machine. I want to show you this car right now across the street that's almost completely 
buried. The whole front of it is under snow. I don't know if you're able to see it, but hold up. Quality might be bad, but do you see that car right there? Right there? All of that is covered in snow. This car over here, its lights are going off from the wind. So, I don't even know. I don't even know. That right there is also a car. I couldn't even see that car. That's a car. <laughs> Oh my god, a bomb clock madness, Bridgen. So the time is 12.37 a.m. I keep taking naps. I've taken like five naps. I just took like a three-hour nap right now. It's just like so cold and I want to be warm, but now I'm up and I'm working and I'm feeling it. So we're getting it done. Leg out. What up? The time is 3 a.m. Uh, bless these Uggs. Fallon gave me, bless the souls of everyone at the Fallon show that gave me these Uggs because they've been coming in clutch. I'm gonna go take a shower, then I'm going to edit this vlog, and then I'm going to watch some American Horror Story since I've officially effed up my sleep schedule and I'm like wide awake now. So I've saved one thing of soup and one, even though I really want to eat the soup, I have to, I have to conserve because I only have a croissant left um, and I need to eat tomorrow. Although it just stopped snowing, it's 3 a.m. and I'm hearing a plow outside, so it's like, seems to be getting better, but there, I don't think there's any flights leaving in the morning, so at this point, it's kind of like, I'm missing Sundance for sure. And now the stress is that um, my whole team is just working on getting me out of New York, because I actually have a really big shoot on Monday that like will be very hard to reschedule, so... As of right now, all my flights have me landing in such a way in LA that I will be very late for that shoot. So I'm kind of getting screwed over left, right, and center here. Um, but Fallon was so worth it. So, so worth it. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a tricky situation because I feel so out of control. Like There's nothing I can do. I'm just sitting here being like, ah, everything's getting screwed over. And everyone in Salt Lake City, my team was like, oh my God, we're praying for the gods that you come. I don't know. I guess Scott lives in Salt Lake City who directed the a Trip to Unicorn Island movie. Um, I guess he's going to have to take my place. And I'm, I don't know. It's kind of crappy, but let's go take a shower. Let's go take a shower. Mew. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, it's 5 a.m. Wide awake. But I'm going to go to bed. Uh, I'm going to edit this vlog, try to go to bed. And hopefully, hopefully, go home tomorrow. <laughs> Since I'm missing, or some God sent a miracle. Actually, there's no way because of the time difference. There's no way I would make it for Sundance. No way. That's really sad. I was really looking forward to it, man. Damn it. Mother nature. But hopefully, I can fly out tomorrow and like, figure out my life and not after the rest of my days. But I'm going to head to bed. Thank you for joining me on another day. And I hope you had a great day. And a book is in my nose. If you like it, subscribe. If you like it, subscribe. If you like it, subscribe. This is my first ever late night talk show period. Thank you so much. But he's so nice and wonderful and made me feel so comfortable. And it literally went by so quickly. It was. And it was fun. It was really, really fun. What? You guys have to let us know what you thought about it. But yeah. I thought it was.